President-elect Joe Biden formally announced his health care team this week, naming California Attorney General Javier Becerra as his choice for Health and Human Services Secretary. But what does Becerra's appointment mean for health care and the legal issues surrounding religious liberty? Joining us to discuss this and more is attorney at the Center for American Liberty and the Dillon Law Group, Harmeet Dillon. Harmeet, I want to begin with Javier Becerra as Health and Human Services Secretary. He has a legal background, but zero frontline health care experience. What does this appointment tell you about the Biden administration's priorities when it comes to health care policy and perhaps more importantly, the freedom of conscience and religious liberty? Well, I think it's an odd choice, and I think even people on the left think so. Uh, the uh, attorney general of California is a former congressman. That's what he's done for most of his career. He was briefly a prosecutor before that, and his claim to fame mm -hmm. has been suing President Trump uh, over 100 times in California. So he would have been a natural fit for a Biden administration as attorney general. He has zero health care yeah. experience other than suing people who are critical of Planned Parenthood. And he has policy chops only in the sense that every other Democrat has policy chops regarding uh, the Affordable Care Act. So I think what this mm -hmm. tells you, number one, is that he that Biden probably wants to appoint a woman for attorney general for virtue signaling purposes, and that's why they fit uh, Becerra somewhere else. But Becerra has shown a rabid commitment to persecuting anybody who criticizes Planned Parenthood. And that, I suspect, is a top policy priority for the Biden administration. And so that gives comfort to all of the um, abortion warriors out there that HHS is going to impose a very radical, um, radical agenda on people who protest that. Yeah. Uh, following the Supreme Court decision in favor of the Little Sisters of the Poor this past July, Harmeet, which upheld the exemption for the sisters from that contraceptive mandate, uh, Joe Biden had this to say in a statement. He said, if I am elected, I will restore the Obama-Biden policy that existed before the Hobby Lobby ruling, providing an exemption for houses of worship and an accommodation for nonprofit organizations with religious missions. Now, as California Attorney General since 2017, Becerra has filed, as you mentioned, 107 lawsuits to overturn various Trump actions designed to expand religious or moral exemptions in these, for these health care requirements. Um, your thoughts on what this will mean uh, to that particular policy? Uh, I imagine they're going to try to deprive everybody. If you read between the lines of what Biden said, any religious organization will be deprived of their exemptions. That's what they really mean there. Right. Well, the way that these folks get around the obvious First Amendment issue of compelling uh, the provision of these types of abortifacients by a religious organization is to say, well, if they're providing services in the marketplace, like as a hospital or as a hospice or, you know, daycare facility, they're really, you know, they're not really operating as a religious entity like a church, and so they should be subject to all of the same rules. That's the tack that they're going to take. And of course, as you know, in, 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 uh, in many organizations and many faiths, uh, the provision of such services to the public, to the poor, is 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 part of the faith. It's part of my faith as a Sikh, and so yeah. I, it's it's kind of an exception that swallows the rule, if you will. So I would expect mm. Javier Becerra to be very much a culture warrior. I mean, the fact that even over the objections of many liberal uh, lawyers and commentators, he has persecuted our client uh, David Delayden, the Sometimes. founder of the Center oh, for yeah. American Liberty, who exposed fetal part trafficking. I'm engaged in half a dozen lawsuits right now around the country over that. But he's the one who was the attorney general who has continued the first prosecution ever of a journalist in California under the wiretapping statute here. And this is a California where you can steal stuff, you can, you know, stab people, whatever, and get away with it. But how dare you expose Planned Parenthood's butchery to the public? Hmm. No, it's, it's outrageous. And, you know, uh, we knew where Javier Becerra was. I mean, everybody knew as a, when he was a congressman, later as attorney general of California. But for Joe Biden to anoint this individual after saying he wants to heal, he wants to be the unifier, he's the guy we always see paddling into church every Sunday holding his rosary beads. What does that tell you about the depth of that commitment to his faith or professed faith? When you see well, appointments I mean, I think, like this. Absolutely. I, I think he's a fake 
Catholic, of course, I'm not a Catholic, but it just seems to me that basic principles of that faith uh, are are abrogated on a daily basis by the policies that this man is pushing, that the Democratic Party is pushing. And now with this appointment, one can confirm that. I mean, what it also shows us mm -hmm. is that he's not serious about health. Like, I would think even for, you know, a Democrat, if you, there are tons of doctors out there who, who have yeah. knowledge of public health, why don't you appoint one of them to the situation um, in, in this position? It, so it really, mm -hmm. it, it only checks the political box. What I'm seeing here is a Kamala Harris influence on a lot of things happening because because oh. jobs are being found for top California leaders, creating more opportunities for others. That's what's happening here, in my opinion. Otherwise, why would you go out of your way to pick this guy? Um, you know, other than his hatred of uh, people who criticize Planned Parenthood, he doesn't really add anything to the mix from a healthcare perspective. Hmm. What can we expect from Becerra's head of HHS when it comes to this contraceptive mandate, particularly for these groups, uh, groups that you've defended, as well as the Little Sisters of the Poor and others? Uh, I think you can expect him to attempt to go out of his way to persecute them. That is what he has shown. Mm. He has shown zero respect for faith, zero respect for right and wrong, zero consideration that maybe there are shades of gray in the position that the left is taking. He, he will not... He, he has future and political ambitions beyond that job, I can tell you. So he will not be satisfied with simply, um, you know, sort of finding some middle ground, which is what Joe Biden has previously suggested that he would mm -hmm. do. And so I think you're going to see some major policy changes. Of course, the Affordable Care Act, as they call it, the Unaffordable Care Act, as I call it as an employer, mm -hmm. uh, will be front and center, providing more expansive health care for illegal aliens, for yeah, and everybody who provides services and gets services is going to have to subscribe to a particular political agenda. And that is really dangerous and unfortunate for the millions, hundreds of millions of Americans of faith who don't agree mm -hmm. that our health care should be conditioned on such a radical agenda. Uh, Harmeet, this past November, the Supreme Court heard arguments in a case, uh, California versus Texas, challenging the constitutionality of the, the Affordable Care Act's individual mandate and asking the court to decide whether the entire law can remain in, in play. What do you expect to see when the court rules on this? And what do you think this administration, who made it very clear that they will fight for the ACA, plan to do in reaction? Well, based on my tea leaf reading of the argument, mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't expect to see the Affordable Care Act to be struck down completely. Um, that is just not within the uh, tenor of the types of rulings that our Chief Justice is, is willing to willing to do. And I think it would be it would be a big lift for the other five so-called conservative mm -hmm. wing of the court to. Uh, you know, go against his leadership on this. And his his uh, earlier ruling on the Affordable Care Act, of course, was quite shocking and I think illegitimate uh, intellectually. And so, you know, he has left us with this um, bizarre uh, half read of a statute at this point. So, yes, I think what we're going to see from a Biden administration, especially if, uh, you know, depending on how many uh, members of Congress and, and members of the Senate shake out, they're going to be pushing very hard for this so-called universal health care. And the expansion of it to tens of millions, ten, ten, uh, over 10 million uh, illegal aliens in this country is further going to complicate access to health care for all Americans. So it's, uh, wow. it's, it's, it's going to be very, particularly states like California here, um, you know, of course, yeah. you know, we have, we have a way for them to get health care, emergency rooms and so forth. But really, we are not solving the problem of people living in the shadows here. And it's not being solved by giving them health care that is going to, in fact, increase the number of people who come here and and live in this uh, twilight world mm -hmm. of uh, illegal yeah. status. So, uh, Lastly, Armit, I, I want to move to another aspect of religious liberty. Uh, last week, the Supreme Court vacated a lower court order that rejected emergency petitions filed by churches who were seeking to have indoor services. This after Governor Gavin Newsom banned indoor services in most of the state. Now, the Supreme Court instructed the California courts to reconsider in light of their New York ruling. Your thoughts on what will happen? I know you defended a number of churches uh, that were fighting for the right to have their services. Yes, unfortunately, just weeks before this ruling, I think two or three weeks, uh, our first religion case here in California was actually dismissed. Uh, but we are on the mm. briefs in the South Bay case, which is the case that went up to the United States Supreme Court first. And Justice Roberts, again, uh, gave uh, a, I think, very poorly thought out um, 
quashing of our position. But the court with Justice Barrett has flipped on that issue. And so the if our same cases had come up to the Supreme Court with Justice Barrett, the opposite result would have occurred and there'd be a lot more religious liberty in California this year. But we expect what's going to happen is that the Ninth Circuit um, has, in fact, I believe, just in the last day or so, vacated its uh, prior ruling and sent the case back down mm. to the district court. So the district court will now uh, make a further determination based on the guidance given by uh, the United States Supreme Court in the um, in the the Catholic Diocese case. Mm -hmm. well, uh, we'll keep monitoring that. And Harmeet, thank you for the update and for staying on these cases. We'll check in with you soon. Thanks again. Thank you, Raymond.